Hello, and welcome to the podcast generator. Please enter your generator password. Welcome. New Eden. Please select a genre. For mind-numbing PvP fits, please press 1. For express mining, please press 2. For news and other bullshit, please press 3. You have selected news and bullshit. Your new podcast is now being created. Your new podcast is ready. Thank you for using the podcast generator. Have a nice day. Welcome. Welcome to Echoes of New Eden. <laughs> you know, now that I notice, that intro was over a minute long, like a minute and 20 seconds. Yeah, it's long. long. It's long. Okay, maybe I'll tone that down for next episode. <clears throat> and it's an hour later for me na- here now because you don't know what daylight savings time is, so I'm tired yes. as it is. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my state does not be- believe in daylight savings time, so therefore we did not do it. Everybody is a an hour ahead, so uh, nobody believes in daylight savings time. We just all have to put up with it. Yeah, you have to put up with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much so, it. Yeah. Welcome everybody to Echoes of New Eden, episode eight, and uh, we have Taylor Rick back with us. So, what's going on, Taylor? Welcome yeah. back. Yeah, th- it's great to be back. It's great to be back. You know, it's funny listening to the show last week when I was uh, away. I'd pull it up and listen to it, and I found myself trying to talk to you guys while listening to it as if I was sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, shit. Now, on a on a rating scale of uh, 0 to 10, how did PM Blue, 10 being the best, how did he, how oh, did he do? God, you're killing me. I'm going to put him you're, on spot. You're killing me. Uh, <laughs> he did good. He did good. Uh, he could have been a little louder. He could have been a little more cocky and arrogant like, like I am. Um, but no, he did fine. He did fine. I'm not going to give him. I'm not going to give him a number. But he did good. He did good. Yeah. Well, also he did. Well, he did really well last week. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great show. It was a great episode. I liked. I liked hearing uh, Bradrick. I'd never heard his voice before, so that was great. Right. And that's what I'm saying. I was like, yeah. even though I've heard him in Achieved, Achieved had an episode with Bradrick, but when I'm reading his articles, like I want to kind of like play his voice in my head while I'm reading his articles, just so I. Oh, I do now. You know what I, I do mean? now. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, you got to do this for me, please. And and he did. So uh-huh, we're uh-huh. Uh, thankful to have him on and delightful guy too, uh, both in and out of New Eden. So cool. All yeah. right. So for this week, we have our uh, game news and everything going on within New Eden. And uh, oh, one thing that I wanted to just drop uh before we start getting into game news and stuff is show supporters you know and actually i i may not talk about it very much but uh there there are quite a bit of people that do support this show and uh I, you know i do have an amazing fan base out there so i appreciate everybody supporting the show and uh you know and just being a listener and all that uh i did have one fan actually give me some isk and so uh ah. he actually donated me some isk and so shout out to Kronos. He uh gave me gave a contribution to the show because I don't really ask for money. I don't do Patreon. I don't I don't rely on ad revenue or anything on YouTube. And you know, right. he'd asked about what can what can he do to help support the show? Well, I was like, well, you can you can help by supporting my game, you know, with that isk I I'm able to do the stuff that I want to do in the game. So, sure. Yeah. You know, obviously, I, I don't, I don't rob the corp wallet. I'm corp leader poor, but I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the money is the corpse, uh, not mine. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that I haven't heard any bullshit from my guys when I made that comment a few weeks ago. <laughs> oh, it's because they know it. Just they, they blatant, <laughs> yeah. you blatantly just take it without putting it on the the ledger. 
Yes. Well, they they also they also know that every single time I go mining, every ounce of ore goes into the into the hangar. They also know that every single time I go ratting, it goes into the corp wallet. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Damon Zell, no need for the thrashers. I have plenty of thrashers. I literally, there was one day <laughs> I bought every thrasher on the market. <laughs> and, and that was like 12. No, no joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're good there. So thank you, everybody. If you do want to support me in the show and, uh, you know, that that's a way that you can do that. So uh, I can give you my contact info for that. But otherwise, let's talk about New Eden. And uh, so what we got going on, what, what's on this? What's on the plate this week, Taylor? Uh, there's a little bit on the plate, uh, which is amazing because when we started this about an hour and a half ago, we had nothing on the plate, but we've got the <laughs> a- April update to talk about. Uh, we'll have a little bit of info there. We've got a large Pravi battle that happened, yes, in Pravi. Uh, not quite the Amish uh, <laughs> of the oh, game that people think. Sorry about that joke. <laughs> it was a bad joke. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. I got some feedback for you on that, but that's okay. Uh, fighting in Fountain because Fountain is still burning. And then we've got a little bit of news about Merc coalitions and alliances. And of course, our favorite bot, Oxalis, has some new features we want to talk about. So those are our headlines for tonight's show. Yeah, plenty to talk about. So maybe we'll aim for a three hour episode. Maybe not. (laughs) (laughs) That'll be one in the morning. That's okay. (laughs) So uh, going into the game announcements, we do have a couple of announcements, and uh, we'll go right into the Q&A and maybe give a little bit of our opinion on this. And so the first question of the day, would love to know if the devs are considering increasing exploration data and relic sites, since as of now, they are extremely few and respawns very slowly about every four days. So the answer to that, they are currently, well, currently... Uh, we would not consider adjusting the respawn speed of data and relic sites. We don't want to reduce the rarity of the integrated rigs because of the addition to relic sites. Uh, uh, I, uh, Frederick might have a comment so, on this, I suppose, with his exploration yeah. <laughs> expertise. I don't really yeah, yeah. do exploration too much for this to affect me in the game. Uh, could I do know that there are a lot of people that were complaining about it about the scarcity of this stuff? So, well, yeah, I mean, in reality, there is no exploration, there really is not. It's just, uh, I'm gonna hunt around for however many hours it takes to find one of these sites. That's not really exploring, that's that's poking holes until you you're poking on something until you find a hole. That's what it is. So, it's not really exploration. Um, sure, you got to scan and you got to, you know, but that seems so tedious. And, and I stopped doing it because it would just take forever to find anything. And then when you found something, it'd be worthless. Um, so, it just didn't, um, I don't know, that, that part of it, the exploration side needs to be completely revamped. If you want to call something exploration, then it needs to be something to where when you're going out into the universe of Eve, New Eden, you can come across something that you've never seen before. Now, granted, that's going to have to make it randomized and, yeah, treasure maps, uh, randomized, um, different avenues you have to take, maybe some different skill sets, maybe not. And maybe it's just a, maybe it's, maybe it's something that doesn't really have a whole lot of value in the game, but at least it's collectible and it does make it more enticing and more entertaining. It's different every time as opposed to when you're, when you're doing exploration now, you're doing the exact same thing over and over and over mm-hmm. again. And it's just, and, and for hours to get nothing, and it just doesn't. Uh, it just doesn't. I don't think that really helps anybody. Um, and it does. I mean, obviously, on the market side of things, for the items you get from that, it does keep those. Um, what are those things? The data cores or whatever you use for reverse engineering and or for production. Um, it does keep those things really inflated price wise, which is actually good because they're a little. There's one of each anyway that's overpowered. The rest are junk. Like you can basically get two for one when you build something, hmm. but um, because they're worth because they're so expensive, it's not really worth it. Um, because they're, they're they're just rare. You can't get enough, and you need like fifty of them or whatever to make two capitals. Or maybe it's more than that. I forget. It's a lot. Yeah. But um, so keeping those prices high and keeping that part of it rare, I get that part of it. Um, but I don't get the other end of it with the whole, you know, four days. Good God. Yeah, and Eve Online. It's two hours or three hours or something like that. It's well, it's totally different. We we say it all the time. This is, this isn't Eve Online. 
I know. And I just said that. And I say that too. I get mad at people. It's like, this is not, and I even post that up on Reddit too. It's like, this is not Eve online. Stop comparing it to Eve online and maybe you'll be happier. And then people get pissed, but whatever. So, well, it is what it is. We'll, uh, we'll continue on and maybe we can talk about more that in more depth, uh, in the, uh, April patch discussion. Uh, so here's the next question. Would it be possible to allow for a little bit of personalization for each character, Sorry, for each player's character page that when you click on another player in game, you can get a better idea of what he is she likes or is like. Hmm. So, yeah, it, and again, comparing it to EO, EO does have a mm-hmm. uh, number of customizable features. I mean, you could change the cheekbones and hairstyles and give your person a beard and all that stuff in there. Um, but then I think also too, this, this person is kind of getting some of your interests in there as well. You know, yeah. do you like to pirate? Do you like to mine? You know, maybe Are stuff you currently like that. single. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. Uh, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, that's what it sounded like when I read that I was thinking, Oh, this looks, sounds like the, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like Facebook. Uh, but <laughs> right. No. Um, I, I do like this thought though, because that was one of the things when I first started playing Eve online that I was just completely, yeah, Nettie's tender. Uh, I was completely, um, <laughs> thrown back by, I mean, I've played a lot of games, uh, over, <laughs> over my years. And this was the Eve online was the first game I ever played where the character customization was so nuts. And I mean, it was so detailed and so in fine grained. Uh, I just, I'd never thought of, uh, personalizing a character like that until eve online and i loved it i thought it was fantastic yeah. and it would be nice to have some of that uh here i think that would be cool dude um and that goes along with the stuff we talked about before like metals and different clothes and i mean if they really wanted to have things that they could raise extra money for then give us t-shirts for our characters give us hats for our tunes you know Give us uh, different backgrounds. I mean, I'd happily pay five bucks for something cool like that. Or There was even a thing going around when they were starting to do these mashups here recently on EVE Online. And again, we're talking about that game again, but whatever. Uh, where they were doing skins on, they did a skin on an APOC uh, that was a Hello Kitty uh, sticker all over the side of it. And it was pink. And I just thought that was fantastic. Like, I would definitely pay for a skin like that, even if it did nothing for my damn ship. Right. Um, so, you know. No, it's it's a good idea. I'm glad to see yeah. that they're going to do something with it. And I, so. I actually had this thought. Uh, I remember, you know, in, in games like Fallout 3 and, uh, you know, Morrowind, people were creating, like, actors <laughs> because the, the, <laughs> the visual customization was so much. Like, people were creating Chuck Norris in Fallout. Oh, yeah. In, in, in yeah. Morrowind and stuff. Well, in Morrowind, like, you can jump mountains. And so... Chuck Norris was very, he fit in that realm. Maybe not necessarily in Fallout. <laughs> but anyway, um, so back into Eve Echoes, they did have an answer to that, and they did say that they are redesigning the game card and the character page. As you said, our goal is to fully personalize the name card and make it easier for people to know each other. At the same time, we also want to make sure the name card is more precise and well-presented. So there's a chance that this feature will be released in the second half of the year. So maybe, uh, maybe a, awesome. a, a late December type update or whatever. You know, <laughs> yeah, <next>. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so. That'd be cool. I mean, I can I can see people now though complaining. My my character changed. I've been looking at the same face for two years, and now it looks different. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's what happens. With I'd like changing. to see, but you know, you know, and I think somebody had brought it up too, and we may have talked about it. Was uh. Like more metals. I know I've been I've been trying to mm-hmm. push the devs for more metals, and you know there there's somebody was talking about you know making a metal for mining like a billion M3 ore or something, you know. So like make it kind of like an achievement type metal that people can wear, and then yeah, people can see card, that CC metal, <laughs> credit card metal. <laughs> I'm still waiting for mine. <laughs> Who spent the most? Who spent the most? Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's funny. That's funny. Okay. So another question, and it and it should be the shape of a whale, of course. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is it possible to have a fuel remaining indicator in the capsular outpost, like the corporation outpost has in its management menu? And they said thanks for the suggestion. And they, uh, it appears that they are planning to implement that feature. So that's cool. Is that kind of like one of those? Oh shit! It doesn't moments. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Back to the drawing We missed boards. that. Like, uh, oh, crap. Because that's like a no-brainer. Uh, <laughs> everything else in the game shows you how far your fuel will go. You know, on a beacon, you see how, how many times you can light that beacon with how much fuel's in your tank. On all of your mods, like group shield boost, you can see how many times you can light that um, just with how much fuel you have in the hangar. Same thing with the uh, Corporation Citadel, uh, which I wish they'd stop calling it an outpost. It just drives me nuts how they capsular outpost, corporation outpost, like, uh, anyway. So it seems like they mix those words up every once in a while. <laughs> But uh, on the on the Citadel, you've got um, you know it tells you how many days until your fuel runs out, which is forever in a freaking day. Um, so why doesn't that happen over on the outpost? And it's even more needed there than it is anywhere else because when you put double REMs or an REM in a grav well, it takes a lot of freaking fuel uh, for the grav wells, right? So yeah, being able to plan for something is uh, you can figure it out, obviously. But mm-hmm. shit, it would be nice. It would be handy. It seems like it's a very simple thing for them to do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you think that'd be kind of like a flip of the switch, but I guess not. You would think I can't. I, it can't be that difficult. So, so all it'll right, it'll be a shadow up. They won't say anything. It'll just show up. Then uh, here's the next <laughs> question, and this one is more toward this next update that sh- we should be seeing. Is in the upcoming industry update, are we going to see any structures to improve assist with mining? The main structure I would like to see is uh, the base detection array or similar structure to upgrade the level of mining belts and clusters or a structure to help spawn regular slash random compressed mining belts or clusters. Hmm. Uh, well, I don't know. Some people... That could go either way. Uh, I'll read their answer first, though. We currently have no <laughs> plans to introduce any industry-related corporation add-on in the update Industry update will focus on the release of the Noctis, Rorqual, Orca, and their modules. Hmm. Okay. Well, I didn't realize that this was uh, an industry update. I think it was kind of just like a... I think we're going to get like a game balance. Not necessarily... Well, there's two things. Yeah, I mean, there's the industry update and a game balance, right? So it's really two things. Actually, three things. But um, but yeah, I break it down as just two. Industry update as well because of the, the release of those ships. Um, which I think, I mean, again, we can go back and look at the Orca and they still talk about gas mining when you look at that ship in the game. So who knows what they're going to do with that end of it. It's all up in the air. But when it comes to this thing, um, ah, so I own a system that is T7 or my corporation owns a system that's T7 and we've put the base detection array in it to upgrade it to a T9. It can only go up two levels. So now it's a T9. So that means you can turn every T7 into somewhat of a T9, right? And that mm-hmm. also means you can turn T8s into a T10, but somewhat of a T10. It's going to have four or five anomalies that are that are T10 out of a T8. And if you go and do the same thing with the belts, um, you're doing the exact opposite of of what of what industry really needs, and you're doing the exact opposite, I think, in my mind, of what the game needs. I'm not a fan of this base base detection array. I'm not a fan of it at all. If I, if I could. Uh, if it, I have had my way, I would take it out of the game. And, and that means that my own system would now no longer be a T9. It would be a T7. Um, and the reason for that is is because you only have so many spots on the map that are T10. And you only have so many spots on the map that are T9 and T8 and T7. And if you suddenly just make it to where, well, everything on the map can be two levels higher, now you've got double the amount of T10 space, you got double the amount of T9 space, and you got double the amount of T8 space. And what does that do? It drives everything down. It drives the, it dri- the value of everything goes down because now you have an abundance. You have double the abundance of what you had before. And we already have an abundance issue. So I'm not a fan of that idea at all. So I'm glad that they have no plans to introduce that. I think that would be a mistake. Um, and I think there, you know, we had this conversation a few weeks back, and I think you guys had this conversation last week too, or somewhere in there. There needs to be more reasons to, to fight over things, right? And this would do the exact opposite. Yeah, those those systems that are T eight or sorry T ten T nine would be uh, more sought after. Yeah, yeah, and T ten is very sought after. 
You know, it's something, it's something you, you strive for. It's something that you, you, you work towards and earn. It's a, it's a progression in the game to get your corporation into a T10 SOV. Not everybody's going to have it, you know? Um, and, and if you water that down, it makes it, it makes it less important. It makes right. it not as special. It makes it easier to obtain and therefore not worth well, as much. You devalued it. With his comment though, on the mining part, like I, I know I have people that mine and they don't want the Mercoxit. So they yeah, could sure. care less for T10 belts. They just want everything else that's not that. Right. But now that capitals are implemented, it can kind of go either way. Because now, one, we have a use for Morphite or whatever the heck it is. Right? Is that Morphite? Mer, yeah, Morphite. Mercoxic and Morphite, yeah. Um, Mer, Mercoxic, the ore, and Morphite, the mineral. Yeah. Am I getting that right? Snacks is in the chat. You can tell me. <laughs> um, so now T10 belts are actually sought after because of that mineral to be able to get that mineral out. And, uh, and so people that don't have T10 belts, you know, obviously have to travel elsewhere to be able to get that stuff. So, and then of course yeah, that yeah. pisses off the people that are living there and you got to work out deals and all this stuff, right? Maybe there's probably people out there that, have to do that stuff but i i don't know yeah but uh prior well, to capitals I mean, I mean people did not want that ore. they did not want to waste the storage space of their hangers mm -hmm. or the the storage of the retriever or procurer at the time with that mineral yeah 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 i mean on my end we just stockpiled the shit out of it and now we have so much it's never gonna run yeah. out but mm -hmm. um you know, I, and I did so that too because I used to have a T. Yeah. I used to I used to live in eight spin, so that was T ten. And then with all the mining that I've done in that system, I've actually kept all my stuff. I was able to yeah, implement yeah. that into the build. But in my new system, it's it's T nine base. So obviously, we're just going to get T ten or sorry T nine belts. Yeah. Though T nine is great. T nine belts are fine. Dude, I I don't want to spend energy points on a T ten belt thing. though. I mean that's got to be industry hardcore. No. There's well, yeah, I mean, too. the the base array um, detection array thing that we have in our system takes up, uh, you know, it's level three, so it takes up three. What is it? Thirty power, yeah. right? So yep. ten, twenty, thirty. Yeah. So I mean, it it takes up a, a large chunk of what else we could do with that system, whether that would be building uh, assembly workshops or space lab for dead space. I mean, there's all kinds of things. And, and really, when you look at the number of structures we have right now, and then you get into whether or not you want a Sino blocker or a Sino beacon, you don't have enough room to pack it all into one SOV. You need multiple SOV. And when you start looking at the map, no matter where you are in, in New Eden, there's not enough space <laughs> to really have, you know, a single corp, even if they're maxed at 200 active players, no alts, they're going to need five SOV to be able to do all the things that they're doing. But five is the max. That's all they can get. Mm -hmm. So that's true. Less space, more pressure. That's true. So, I mean, I, which goes back to what I was saying before about the whole, you got to have a point, reason to fight. You got to have something that's valuable. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Yep. Uh, good discussion. Good discussion. So going on um, <laughs> with the uh, other other announcement that they had is they had actually released the Galaxy Project Leaderboard. And yeah. uh, the Corporation Sovereignty Leaderboard in order. GRA is number one. Five Sovereignty, 650 anchor points. And I believe their tiebreaker was in the destroyed value of... Uh, mm -hmm. in. in in the uh in the next list so uh number one was gra number two was saku sakuma drop number three was vlt voltage number four was ret c retribution corp number five was v2 massive dynamic llc and all of these have five sovereignties with 650 anchor points and then uh, they were ranked based off of their destroyed value. So GRA actually had 291, let me count the commas, billion, billion. <laughs> in um, damages. And this is to other citadels and I believe outposts. Uh, correct, yep. So, and, and second... Bomb, yep. In second place was uh, two hundred and eleven billion. 
So mm-hmm. not too far from there. Number th- third place was at two hundred and three billion in damages, and then uh, almost a hundred. After that, it wasn't even close. Yeah, yeah after that, it was a hundred <laughs> billion gap uh, for fourth and fifth yep. place. So, yep, you know, yeah, and right on for those uh, those corporations. I believe they do get uh, some custom. Some custom uh, visuals on their corpse now, so now they have to go into the designing phase. Hopefully, yep, they got top some banners. Five do, and then I actually think it's the top six, w- maybe. I don't know. Snacks knows this by heart. He can probably type in chat and tell Personally, us. I want to yeah, say maybe it is the top five. Actually, I want to say it was top the top 20. twenty. Ah, top twenty. Yeah. Um. Okay, I and then some- I get something from that. I don't know what because in number seven in tie in a tie spot in number seven was Hogs and TSA. I don't know who TSA is a member of, but um, I I built like fifty six some odd structures for that. So I get something. I don't know what the hell it is. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. But, um, and for the destruction leaderboard, ZRQ was number one at four hundred and sixty two billion destroyed structure Boom. value. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. Second place was Recky, Reckium Elite Fleet at 409 billion. SSU, 354 billion. Noir, Cust- uh, Custodia Noir, 293 billion. And then the number five was GRAL Gorilla at 291. Grow. Oh, only serious pilots. Very serious pilots in that corp, and they do very serious <laughs> things. Destroying everything. <laughs> you know, Dead Space was right behind him. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. So, yeah, this is the first time I've actually looked at this list. A number of TSC corps are up on there. Some mm-hmm. SHH corps on there. Some uh, pirate corps are on there. So, yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I believe both these top 20 lists will get customizable banners or logos or something nano cores and something else yeah all right um going on into the patch notes we actually did not really have that much for patch notes this week they did do their optimization for the estimated price based on successful transactions in the market and i did want to note that plex is like over three million now and we were complaining that it was too high at 2.6 <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> i know it's too damn high I'm going to pull it up right now while we're talking because I think right before the show is at two point uh, two point eight or you're right two point nine. Let's go see what it says right at this moment. Um, <laughs> I was just shocked as shit, uh, but I bet you it will go over three. Yeah, two point nine is the lowest on the market, and I don't think any of them go over three, but they're right there two nine nine nine. Yeah, so it's crazy. Yeah, and uh, oh yeah, hey, P- that's that's funny. PM Blue with his little market bot uh, or Oxalis anyway, showing Plex right there on the card. That's cool. <laughs> There's too many commands. You have to memorize them all. It, good thing he no does. shit. No, exactly, exactly. Uh, it is a lot. So for bug fixes, they fixed an issue where some players couldn't take the road to set sail missions or claim rewards from these missions. Two uh, twenty thousand skill points will be issued as compensation after maintenance so okay cool i don't even think i've did that mission <laughs> i can't complete it because i have to do faction oh. war games and i just don't do faction war games yeah so i mean funny thing about that right so i have what one two i have four tunes that after that splendid coupon bullshit have somewhere between 29,000 and 39,000 but or, or 30,000 but not enough for that uh, tractor beam thing that came out last week, <laughs> two weeks ago. Right. <laughs> like, I'm short by, like, I think the one that's closest is I'm short by, like, 200 <laughs> coupons. <Yeah. laughs> and a uh, quick reminder, everybody, update their Concord Pass missions. Ah, it's Thursday, yes. Yep. <laughs> don't go collect your PI before don't, you do it. <laughs> don't press that launch button until you do that. Oh, yes. my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I and you know what? They had this in official media and they posted this on their Twitter. What is your or what is your favorite ship and why? So Taylor, I'll ask that to you. What is your fa- favorite oh, Jesus. ship and why? Oh god. Um 
I still love my succubus. Honestly, I've been flying that thing for forever. I still love that ship. I don't know if it's my favorite though, um, but I do enjoy it whenever I can break it out. Uh, right now, my favorite to use is, is the Nidhogger. I mean, that is just a fucking blast. Uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, if it's just doing whatever, it's probably going to still be the succubus because you can't just take a carrier everywhere. Right. But yeah, friendship. That's your best ship. Friendship. <laughs> uh, crackling <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and stealth bombers some people say it's stealth scepters. bombers yeah yeah i mean i mean that that just depends that just depends on what i'm doing right i mean any guardian ship is what i'm gonna is what gonna be my favorite ship whenever we're doing anything in a fleet but um if i'm just doing a roam somewhere either on my own or with a couple of guys i love the succubus it's a fun ship yeah though so. and and for my answer to that um uh, it's in Rust, we trust, man. Freaking Minmatar <laughs> all the way. I just <laughs> love the ships all the way from the Slasher to the Thrasher to the freaking yeah. badass freaking Maelstrom. My favorite ship is the Maelstrom. And it's not necessarily because it's got the best of anything. It's it's the top of its game. It's a T-10 battleship. It's It looks sexy as it's hell. It's a beast. It's a yeah, beast. It's a giant fucking gun. I don't care if people say it's not the best. I could care less. I love that yeah. ship, and it, it's now, my with, baby. With its shape, Rambo, with its shape and its size, and that one being your favorite one, are you kind of like one of those guys who goes and gets a sports car because he's trying to account for something, or is that what you're saying? Uh, midlife <laughs> midlife crisis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going. Th- I'm currently in my midlife. Eve echoes a uh, crisis and <laughs> I own a maelstrom to compensate for there you go. And that's exactly why I have a, a nid hogger. Exactly. Yeah. LOL says the guy who has an exactly Damon. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Honestly. Yeah. The maelstrom is my favorite. However, when people see me, I may not necessarily be in a maelstrom. Sometimes I'm in a thrasher. Yeah. Sometimes I'm in a tempest. Sometimes I'm in an atron. Weird. People spotted me yeah, in an Atron. Yeah. Um, amongst other things, pods. <laughs> oh, yeah, pods. Yeah. Pods. I have a pod doctrine. So yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but to to answer the question, yeah, Maelstrom is still my favorite ship in the game, and that's actually what I resolved revolved my game around when I first started this game. I went to the end game ships at the time. And I yeah. saw the maelstrom there. I said, okay, I want to go and I want to get that. Yeah, yeah. And so here you we You got are. a nano for it? I do. I actually, I have two. Nice. And uh, I have two. I have the Ascension and I have the Thermo too. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to get the Clear Sky for that or for something different. But I'm working on a couple different maelstrom builds. With a, gener- with a generous contribution from a fan, I'm actually able to afford to build another maelstrom. So, ah, nice, nice. I might have to uh, send that one out. <laughs> send that one out on some rooms. But anyway, yeah. um, cool question, you know, and that that's always cool to you know ask between people as to why is that your favorite ship? It's not necessarily the best one, but it's good to hear the the opinions of uh, some of the peoples and their preferences and ships. So cool. Yeah. All right, player support news. <laughs> they had, they didn't really have much. Uh, they had, I think, what would be a lame question is they had actually asked, "Can the Corporation Citadel be unanchored in game?" Everybody knows that's a no. <laughs> yeah. So no, the Corporation Citadels that's, cannot be unanchored. It's an interesting thought, though, that, to think about this. If there's a T two Citadel or higher in this game, it will be there forever. Hmm. Right. So I mean that's just just gonna switch unless hands it's at downgraded, some point, but yeah, unless, unless it switches hands, blown gets up. downgraded, then blown up. Yep. yep, yep. I mean, there's a mechanic for everything, so it doesn't need to be unanchorable. But um, but yeah, it's just an interesting interesting thought that you know. Anyway, okay. Well, we are due for a short break, and then when we come back, we'll be talking with Crimson King. I'll unmute him during the break, and uh, we'll be talking about this next update. What would we like to see in April? All right, after the break. You're listening to Echoes of New Eden. 
Are you tired of ticks so small she say you ain't got no tick at all? Then what you need is to come on down and join the Council of Ricks today. We got everything. T10 anomalies. T10 rallies. We even got T10 mining. You want to kill some motherfuckers? Come on down, we killing motherfuckers all the time. Are you tired of being a Jerry? Tired of your ships always going down in flames? Wish you could ride like a pickle. And come join us at the Council of Rick C-137, where we have loads of T-10 riding. Just look at those explosions. Mind an ore and industry more up your alley? Then come join our powerhouse fleet and participate in one of our many events. Want fleet PvP? Join up and be a SEAL Team Rick. Become a member of an elite task force. So come live the good life and know with C-137, Council of Ricks. We'll be waiting. Proud member of the Care Bears with Gun Alliance and Sign of Federation. Incoming message. Decrypting. Decryption done. Loading message. Hey there. Tell me. Are you a veteran? Tired of the usual drama in many corps? Or are you new? To New Eden and don't want to be told what to do? Do you want to be free but not fly alone? Listen, this is your story. You decide where your journey leads. Let us be part of it. Let us fly together. Come and follow the call. Become a Kingsman. Kingsman Industries is waiting for you. Docking request accepted. Oh, hi. <laughs> Alrighty, we are back. <laughs> the chat was lit. And uh, I accidentally <laughs> unmuted Crimson a little bit too early. We heard some typing in there, but it's all right. No worries. That's all right. Yeah. What's up, Crimson? <laughs> Sorry about that. Caught in the middle of a joke. Uh, the chat is lit during the uh, commercial breaks. It's always nice to see. And uh, yep. yeah, you got some more praise on the on the C one thirty seven ads. And then uh, Kingsman, he's been recruiting like crazy. He's been posting. Yes, uh, he has Reddit ads everywhere. every day. He even did a spotlight yep. on Damon Zell's latest video, and uh, and then he supplied me with that ad as well. So I appreciate that. And for everybody, please send me your ads, and I'll play them on the air. And uh, I like to have a unique arsenal of ads. I don't really want to play the same ones every week. I want to have a adversity of ads <laughs> so send me some ads yep. i got some people working on some new ads as well so uh hopefully we'll get some more and damon zell yeah sometime in the next couple weeks he uh should have one so cool and yeah welcome crimson king and uh yeah i i mean just welcome <laughs> and thanks for doing yeah, that's this. how you pronounce that's how you pronounce your name. I could not figure that out until you just, okay, now I see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I, was a, I was a big fan of Stephen King when I was a little kid. And, uh, oh, yeah. Stephen King is uh, one of the main villains from the Gunslinger series. I think the first book of his I read was, was Dark Half, I think is what it was called. With the Yeah, loved his books. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, yeah, Crimson Dark King. Dark Tower, that's what it is. You're right, Damon Zell, yep. So we were actually talking uh, before the show, and we picked you up as a guest to talk about this <laughs> but when yeah. we we're talking about the show before the show so i know it's a bit short so, notice um thank you for taking the time and spending it with us but you had wanted some feedback on a article that you'd written and to sum it up this is basically stuff that we would like to see in the april uh, update 
So you do have uh, a number of things that you'd like to discuss. So uh, I'll give the floor to you then. Take it, take it over. Sweet. So this started out as a Reddit post, as most of these articles do. I've got a bad habit of uh, trying to talk about this game and not really knowing how to get the things out there. The, the main two big things I want to see come April is I want pirate bases to have a purpose. And I want covert ops ships to have a lot more gameplay options. I want exploration um, improved. And I got, a, I got about five ideas on how to uh, make those things happen. So I, I yeah, started organizing it by topics um, during the break. And if you'd like, I uh, just cliff notes before I, I post this to Reddit and it disappears forever. Um, I want NPC ads to anomalies and gates, and I've got a few ideas on how to make that happen. What are your thoughts? Hmm. Okay. Like, like, like what? Hold on. I have to actually look. NPC yeah, I have ads. to unpack that a little bit. Yeah. So, what do you I mean, mean by NPC ads? I mean ads like in an MMO boss room. You know how you got additional creeps that'll come in during the fight. And oh, you mean people. add-ons. You don't mean like ads like ADS. You mean like add-ons, additional things that they're doing. I got what you're saying. Okay. Right, right, right. I want additional NPCs, additional pirates to warp into um, your, say you're mining, NPCs uh, with a fleet of maybe escort ships and an industrial, um, a, an industrial ship appropriate to the faction warp in and harass you, you know, potentially scare yeah, you off. Yeah. Yeah. Make it harder for miners, and the and and the reason I want those is they're they're going to be a pain in the neck for industry, but they're also going to be lucrative. I'd, I'd like them to be targets worth people picking up. So yeah. I'm talking, um, and and I'll talk a little bit more about why I think that'd be beneficial um, for for making exploration ships uh, have a purpose in a meta where um, interceptors exist, but. That I, I I want them to complicate things and be based on the tier level of the pirate base in that system. So, Tech Ten pirate base, Tech Ten ads coming into harass your miners. Mm-hmm. If you're in Melsec, it, it would behoove you to keep that base level low where you're keeping your industry. Yeah, I'd, I'd like that sort yeah, of a yeah. strategic depth. Now I did hear on top. And I did hear some chatter about this. That would eliminate that would have eliminated the uh, botting issues we had early in the game too, uh, or at least deterred it quite a bit, as far as that goes. But it keeps the miners on edge. And yeah, sure, if there's a pirate anomaly that may be uh, one AU away or so, and then maybe the pirates would come say hi, and then you have to fend them off. So it would also yeah. promote, promote. It would also promote. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, you're from Canada, which is a boot. Um, (laughs) it would promote um, mining in groups too for safety and all that so uh, yeah I I mean I like that but then you know when you're talking about it I was kind of uh, I I guess smiling because the idea came what if you were just mining and all of a sudden the NPCs just hot drop like a cap or a battleship on you like oh shit you know what I mean (laughs) like you're you're in a gate camp and then all of a sudden an NPC just shows up in a Sharon and F's you up and F's up your gate camp. In a Sharon? Oh, I want to. I want to see that. That's oh, funny. sorry, not a Sharon. Chimera. That's a, that's a freighter. I was. Yeah. <laughs> I was. I was thinking the Chimera in my head, but literally Sharon came out. Oh my gosh! I'm so embarrassed. That's funny. That's okay. Only live. That's okay. Does that happen? Only live. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Okay. Add a Sharon, and then it'll give you a little bit extra content. Maybe it'll. It'll, exactly. Yeah, and then yeah. have drops, right? Yeah, it'll drop uh, some like of those raider raid. faction strip miners <laughs> that we can't get. Point, you know, <laughs> it'll bump you to death. Yeah, you can play football with the share on. There you go. Yeah, uh, just push it back and forth uh, across the field. Yeah, maybe we can get some faction <laughs> strip miners out of those. That's a good point because we oh, haven't God. seen them. Yeah, yet. we do need those. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, true. No, I mean, I like this idea. I, I think the. Um, the bases themselves are just this no-go area and nobody touches them unless you want to, you know, de- you know, <laughs> strip them down in somebody else's system, um, which is kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, um, but when you do go and kill one, I mean, that's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff there. Um, yeah. You know, so I don't know. Um, I do like the idea of the NPCs being in, in, in mining belts. I know a lot of 
my indie guys are going to tell me go go get stuffed. But uh, but I do like the idea of that because I get tired of seeing you know Cove twos die when they've got and, and their fits are just what the are you thinking? Like you yeah. don't even have any. There's not even a resist nothing. I mean it's it's just ridiculous. You didn't even all you've got is two auroras. What are you doing? Uh, you don't even have a cloak. Like that, that yeah, might what's, actually be a, a, an efficiency tactic because yeah, if you yeah. if you know you're going to lose those ships and you know you ain't going to lose that many, you just you know. Well, and not only that, on, yeah, and not only that on the other end, you know, we've done. You guys talked about this last week, and I wish it was on the show because we've done a lot of testing uh, inside of C137 in a T10 belt versus a T10 ratting. Which one makes you more money and more minerals? And ratting wins hands down. Truth. It'll make you more money for sure. And if you do it heavily, long enough, uh, it'll make you more minerals on 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 the average. It'll make you more minerals than just mining, right? So I mean, in one hand, there's like almost no need to mine as long as you pick up all the gray loot. And scrap it at five right. five five. Yep, you will make more minerals out of that than you would have during the same amount of time as you mined. And I, I know the we, rocks don't shoot back, crackling, but that's the problem. You get people just lulled into this sense of they can just sit there and it's easy, and I can do Netflix and chill. And yeah, that's mining all great if you're in high sec. I do. Yeah, a, you know I do a round of mining before I'm going to sleep. <laughs> like, you you know what the control valve is on that though, like. You you bring down the tier of those, like of those systems. You you eliminate that, uh, or at least provide some choice in eliminating that right. to make it you know potentially more profitable to mine in a specific system. I, yeah. I want to add those um, those creeps, those additional uh, invaders to um, anomalies as well too, because it, it'd be a good avenue for introducing rare loot. Yeah, and and give uh, give riders a chance to mine next to their uh, their miners in the system, and then maybe warp into support. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's a lot of uh, number tweaking that could be done there, but I feel like the content, like adding that kind of experience and content, is what's most important from a design perspective. Right. Well, it's not just um, for me. You're right. Right. I think of it more though as variety, and as oh, yeah. a game goes on. And more and people have been playing a game for years and years and years. You just simply have to shake things up a little bit to give more variety for those people who have been around a long time. You don't always have to constantly cater to the brand new guy that's coming in. You do every once in a while, but you still got to cater to the guys that have been here paying your bills for two and a half years. Oh yeah, they so, they deserve rewards. Yeah, like, yeah. So in it for the long haul. I I, I feel like NetEase is doing. Uh, they're releasing a lot of really weird stuff that doesn't serve any purpose at the moment, like those secret traffic con- uh, containers yeah. uh, that, that are probably best to invest in in the long haul, assuming this game survives in the long haul. From their, yeah. from like their, their output, um, I think they're, they're scoped to scale uh, from a program management perspective. But that's me being optimistic. We've uh, NetEase has has uh, dropped a few eggs. <laughs> well, every game has. I mean, this is a thing we all have to take perspective on. Uh, what game have you played and you thought, God, this thing is fucking perfect from day one? I mean, I remember right? I literally went out and bought a PlayStation Four and No Man's Sky. Hold up, day one that it dropped out, just so oh, I could play true. that game, and it was total. And I was so excited and so happy, and it was total shit. And it took them a year and a half to make it the game I love. I it's still it's a whole game. different game now. It's, it's it amazing. Is. It is perfect now. So Skyrim yeah, was great. Well, maybe not perfect, but it's great. It's pretty damn great. And you <laughs> and you have to love it when when uh, when devs stick to it and work it and work it and give them time. And and that's I don't know. That's the way I look at it with NetEase. Give them time. Give yeah. Them time. Eve Online when it first started was not anything what it is now. Right. Yeah. Look so, at look at video footage of Eve Online way back in the day and and compare it to nowadays. It's true. Yeah, very different. So, yeah, and g- go on uh, next on to the next point here. What do we got? Yeah, so um, on the subject of pirate bases, I feel like uh, they should affect the tax rates on ITCs. The further away from Jita folks are, that's a that's a nod towards industry. Um, say I, say I, that I, again. 
Someone <laughs> sent me something and I was reading it. I apologize. Rip. Yeah, sorry. I feel like pirate uh, pirate bases should affect the tax rates on ITCs between uh, those ITCs, the routes between those ITCs, and GDA. So mm. the more T10s or, or T8s you have, for example, on that route, uh, the lower the taxes on that ITC are, or would be. This is a bit number crunchy and yeah. kind of hard to wrap, uh, hard to, to wrap up in a neat bow. But I'm looking for pirate bases to be indicators of trade routes. Um, if folks want to do uh, damage to the industry of other alliances or corporations, kill the pirates uh, along that route, send in more Concord, raise their taxes. The ability to manipulate tax rates on ITCs would be such a lever for industry. It would open up so many markets because currently there is Jita and Jita. Amar-ish. No, nah, it's when, Jita. When the event was going on where they lowered that tax rate, uh, when that happens, yeah. I feel like it's it's them uh, tweaking those levers, seeing what yeah. happens when they mess with the tax rates. Right, yeah. Good point. And I'm hoping, yeah, sorry. That'd be a different. There'd be a different. Uh, it'd add a different dimension of gameplay, so that's fine. I mean, the more the more the more players uh, control, the more control that players have over the market, and not quite market manipulation, but close to it, right? Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, the the whole game itself <laughs> is based off of um, oh, the market's uh, everything. The market, right? And it, it's all of it, and so the more player driven it is uh the better off it is and so anything you can introduce to to play with that mechanic uh, and give more control back over to the players the better i'm not so sure about i I think i would take the idea though and switch it and say the more pirates that are along that route and the higher tier those pirates are the higher your taxes are because the more the more uh policing if you would say you would Ooh. need by Concord. So your taxes would actually be higher along those routes, thus giving you an incentive to go there and try to lower those bases. And of course, your enemies having an incentive to go there and stop you from doing it. Another reason to fight. I I, my... that... So I'm going to make a note to change that in the article because I love that idea. I think, yeah. I think that's a much better, that'll much more, uh, more likely achieve the effect I'm aiming for. Yeah. Um, and that's just, I mean, we have to think about that some more. That's just, off the top of my head, but um, no, it's uh, anything you can do to increase that. And that gets back to what we were talking about too, like exploration, data sites, all these other things. There's so much in the game right now that doesn't drop. It's just on the market for 10K or 20K or whatever they, you know, whatever they, right. they've already got the price set to. And there's so many things that you get that you can't build. Everything needs to be buildable and everything needs to be droppable, period. There, right. shouldn't, be a, there shouldn't be anything up there that, that, uh, NetEase is controlling the price on, including blueprints. Every single blueprint needs to be droppable somewhere. Just com- um, it, um, so. I'm going to disagree with you there. Uh, please forgive me for that. But, no, okay. uh, mainly because I want my, my one bottle of Quaif that I held on to after the, uh, <laughs> the event. I get to hold on to that. And yes. Build the value on that over time. Yeah, that's the, uh, uh, that's the hidden golden egg right there. That thing's going to value over yeah. time. It's going to appreciate so much. You're going to have billionaires... <laughs> Coming off of that, it's like the yeah the lottery ticket you never scratched. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's funny. Or the uh, the single uh, marine uh, that's still in your you know in your ship <laughs> as you fly around doesn't drop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So True, going further, funny. you have uh, this pop quiz question here. Oh yeah. So why would you ever fly a Kovops frigate over an interceptor? Yeah, good question. <laughs> uh, maybe to attack structures. Well, scouting. I mean, scouting. You yeah. can use both for you can use both for scouting, but on a, uh, but for me on an interceptor, um, if you're using that for scouting, then you never stop. You you can't sure. stop with a covert ops. You can. You just yeah. stop and cloak. Well, and ha- then you're watching. So one's an eye and one's an active scout. That's in my mind. And heavy sure, range has scan a- versus, versus focus scan. I, I think that's a niche that the covert ops fills very nicely. But the, the main point I'm driving at here is, is the key operational difference between a covert ops frigate and an interceptor is its cargo capacity. The old stealth imicus. I mean, everybody, uh, 
Everybody yeah. should have one if they're running through uh, gate camps moving uh, minerals uh, the easiest way. Because you can get up to 30k uh, storage space in there. My, my, my thinking is they should gate treasure chests or at least loot drops from exploration um, data using the size of those sealed containers. Hmm. So, so secret trafficking containers, for example, you can only open them in a station, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they're, they're dropped out in the, uh, in the, the back ass, like middle of nowhere uh, from those maps. I, I love navigational wave graphs, by the way. Please don't hate me. <laughs> but like the treasure at the end of those treasure maps is something that anybody can pick up at the moment. Yep. Now, if you make those, you make those treasure chests, uh, say, 1,000 uh, meters cubed. You make them 500 meters cubed for those people who, you know, want to, like, kit bash uh, an explorer out of, uh, of an interceptor. Awesome. You've solved the, the difficult, like, you've made the map uh, minigame way more rewarding than just going to the market to pick up some secret cargo containers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like currently folks are going shopping. Uh, it's really easy to just take an interceptor and run to the end of that uh, map that those wave graphs give you. Uh, I'm looking to make the higher tier ones more like shopping in Chicago. Again, to make, you know, pirate bases more influential and yeah. create more operational scale interactions. Right. And that's just a small fix. That's a minor change that they've already shown they have the capability of uh, inputting. Like those secret trafficking containers are specialized. They're very focused. The only way to get new wave graphs is to break them open or drop some bills. Uh, It's a very limited resource. You could create a, uh, a, what's it called, a cartel of secret trafficking containers fairly easy easily. And I'm, I'm not saying this to make a run on those things because I have a stockpile of them in my <laughs> hair. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a limited resource with limited access and it's a pain in the, in the neck to do. I feel like that should be rewarded. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree with that part of it. Um, if something's painful, then there should be some sort of a reward out of it. Um, and they need to bring containers into the game period i mean just whatever they are whether they're secret containers or locked containers or whatever else uh and they did mention they did mention in one of these q and a's here something about corporation uh missions and maybe this gets more to a little bit of a flavor of what you're wanting i don't know what these corporation missions are but from what they were discussing, it sounded like, finally, I can actually give a mission to one of my haulers to actually go and use an actual fucking hauling ship God and actually be able to use okay. those, you know, use that thing as opposed to not, you know, because right now your your missions for deliveries, the whole delivery system is just mm-hmm. non-existent. Non-existent. It's, it's there, but it, nobody uses it because it's stupid. Um, so... I would like to see that come into play and maybe some of that happens with what you're talking about here. Cause obviously you've got haulers that are, you can use as covert ops. I mean, hell I've got an RB <laughs> Atron two scepter that I use as my scepter hauler with 1218 mm-hmm. meters cube space for shit's sake. So, yeah. so, um, so, so yeah, I, yeah, I completely agree. Um, there's, there's no reason to fly, for example, a combat, uh, industry ship at the moment, unless you're, you know, being, what do you baby. mean? So, there's- Combat industry ships uh, on the on the tech tree they yeah. they provide a little bit more offensive capability. But if you are ever the offender in an industry ship, you are wrong at the moment. Um, that's a fast way to die. What what I'm know. hoping to do with these more unwieldy uh, treasure chests is to have them as the additional loot drops from those raiding pirates or from earlier. Pirates should you know have treasure chests. It's kind of their thing. Yeah, that's true. Have you ever seen the uh, squads, though, of the uh, humpback haulers that are all PvP fit? Those are um, those are I, dangerous. I don't want to run across five or six of those guys. <laughs> uh, same thing with the guy that's got the Neros 2 that's, um, that's a hell of a combat ship, like, surprisingly, just because of its defense mode. Like, 
And I get what you're saying, and, and you're not you're not necessarily wrong, but at the same time, I always love that creativity that people bring when they when they do these crazy fits that then and then they figure out how to make them work. Uh, mm-hmm. I really enjoy that. You know, that, that's a really good point. I, I really like the idea of, of uh, enabling and promoting that sort of creativity and and yeah. fitting and, and gameplay. Like, that's true. Yeah, I've seen everybody posting in chat real quick here about some breaking news. Are we talking about this post from uh, Hayden about the uh, inscription of the Galaxy event? Is that what everybody's pinging the shit out of me for? (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) Let me read it real quick because I think that's what everybody's saying. Um, Yeah, okay. Uh, Is that okay, guys, real quick? Mm -hmm. Just Because that way they'll stop pinging me. Okay. Yeah. It says, uh, dear pilots, we have noticed that the inscription of the Galaxy winner list, the rule, if a corporation has the same rank on both leaderboards, they will be issued with rewards based on their sovereignty leader sh- leaderboard rank is not applied, resulting in some corps being listed in the two leadership boards simultaneously. Yeah. We are working on the issue now. We sincerely apologize for the inconvenience caused and kindly ask for your patience and understanding. And real so, quick, yeah, that is breaking news. That was just announced as we we're yep. doing the show. And I did notice that yep. when I was reading the the top five on each list, GRA was on both lists. It was yep. number yep. one on one list, and then it was number five on the other. So um, I guess that's their announcement for something like that to where they're going to fix that. That's At least that's what I'm getting out of it. Yeah, also, they, should, they should publish a fixed list as soon as possible. Wouldn't be that hard to do, would it? Unless that's all just artwork and they've got to wait for some guy to come back into the day and then pull up uh, Photoshop and move all the little smart tiles around. And Well, <laughs> it, it might be a one or a zero, you know. It, <laughs> yeah. You never know. I'm, I'm sure they've got a, a, an asset that they uh, use while developing that page. Could... Spin up the, uh, spin up the uh, hamster wheel. Breaking uh, news, <laughs> we also accidentally uh, wiped everybody's destruction leaderboard, so nobody got it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the, the real treasure was the destruction we made along the way. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Back to okay. Crips in here. Uh, so yeah, that's sorry. <laughs> good deal there. Uh, what What's the next point here that you had? So the next topic is one that everybody wants: um, fixing the interceptor problem. Oh yeah, everybody and their mother's got a fix for this <laughs> not to say that yeah. you're you're bad or anything for doing that but there's there's a lot of people uh vocally they're very verbal about uh, getting the interceptors fixed yeah i i don't think that there's uh, honestly i don't want to see the interceptors fixed they don't need to be buffed they don't need to be nerfed they need to be left exactly as the way they are there just needs to be a simple counter uh, just like there is a balance and counter for everything else, right? Oh, so if the game needs get to get through better. The bubble, <laughs> it's, no, no, it's no. The scepter, it's it's the very game. simple. <laughs> no, no, it's very simple. It's smart bombs. That's it. Just bring the smart bombs mm. in, um, bring mines in or something like that, and, and that's it. It's just a tactic. That's all you need is a tactic. So, so and right I, now you have no tactics to stop them because you can't. They just go I, right through. I totally agree on, on the idea of introducing counterplay as a valid uh, way to tackle the problem. I don't know if smart bombs and um, and and mines in general are are a capability that their platform can can handle, because we already know that they struggle with drones, they struggle with missiles, they're, whatever whatever backend they're using to calculate combat. Um, when you when you start throwing things in space and expecting them to stick there, I guess they could they could program them as loot. Uh, as as cargo containers of a sort, like they, which also does also uh, cause issues in the game, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, constantly, but yeah, yeah, no, right. I mean, there just needs to be some sort of well, okay, so then then maybe you don't make it a smart bomb, maybe you don't make it anything like because that all comes from Eve Online, maybe you just make it a, a specific ship that has some sort of, um, you know, that's a specific role, right? I mean, everything yeah. has a everything has a has, has some sort of counterplay to it. That like they're going to have um, these force recon ships here soon that'll be able to decloak cloaked ships. So you can't just constantly leave an eye in the system, or supposedly, we'll see how that works. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, man, awesome. So that's that's coming. So maybe there needs to be a specific module or ship that has a counter for a scepter, right? Um, Make hey, hell, make it destroyers. Make it to where only destroyers 
can have a yeah a fly catcher yeah. uh, for interceptors, right? Well, Something um, heavy rain, just a counter. Heavy rain had stated it just to a, us. A stasis web field module. Man. Yeah, as opposed to just the web of fire that's targeting, yeah. but just a whole field. Yeah, but just to slow them down. Slow them down. Maybe a good counter to. Yeah, it yeah. counter to swarms, but not. It doesn't solve the the problem with interceptors right now. In my opinion, is they do everything better than everything else. Like mm. their their DPS um, uh, compared to equivalent frigates is better. Like. Well, maybe not compared to faction frigates, but their DPS is on par, uh, or, or at least peer, with faction frigates. Yeah, yeah. Um, their their tackle capability, their maneuverability, their operational utility. Uh, what's the best scout in the game? Because by bubble, uh, it's it's all the interceptor. And I think they I think they actually developed them that way as a sort of onboarding method for new players as the game was launching. They're extremely pushed, if if you don't mind me using a. Uh, Magic the Gathering term. They're they're <laughs> stacked. Like they statistically, they're they outpace explorers in terms of exploring. They they outpace um, Lodgy uh, frigates because you know yeah. bubble will be gone. If you if you really want an interceptor Lodgy, you could build it. There's mm-hmm. they do everything too well, and I feel like what they need is some of uh, some of their roles, some of some of the roles that they perform should be offloaded to other ships like the assault rifter or something like that. Yeah. And I, I'll, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll quote Benzie. Benzie's been very vocal on this and he's had videos on, and, and, and he's worked in the, with the content creators and in, in our discussions about ways to nerf them. I do want to say, especially for exploration, Interceptors do better for exploration than exploration ships. You know what I mean? And and in similar as well as other jobs too. Oh yeah. That, <laughs> it's that, you it's give them ridiculous. you give them unwieldy cargo to solve that problem in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Cuz like if their options are take all the blueprints and get the same amount of loot that I used to be getting in in the old version of those exploration sites or Take the uh, the gambly box and hope that it's there's something worth it inside. Like that's an interesting choice. That's interesting gameplay. That mm-hmm. that creates interesting fitting requirements for building an interceptor explorer. Like there there are ways to make exploration interesting, and they just haven't done them yet. Yeah, no, no, they haven't. Not not on that end of it. I think another point that gets missed sometimes on the interceptor side. And maybe the reason why they haven't put in a, a specific counter to stopping them from going from station to station to station or gate to gate to gate and no way to really stop them uh, is specifically because it's a mobile game. Mm-hmm. It's not on a PC. It's not hard-lined into an internet connection. You're going to have drops. You're going to have this. You're going to have that. Plus, it's also a mobile game that you're carrying around in your pocket, and people are going to hop in real quick, hop out, hop in real quick, hop out. So, true. so there has to be at least one way and one method of getting from point A to point B uh, without you sitting there staring at your screen the entire time. Now, they could have solved that probably with jump clones, um, but they didn't. Instead, they solved it basically with interceptors. Well, put um, that, so, take that bubble immunity and throw it onto a shuttle uh, if they want to take yeah, that away. But yeah, I, I, yeah. I think interceptors should have that bubble immunity. Like, Dude, I would Operationally totally. speaking, they should be. I would totally animals. rock. I would totally rock a shuttle with a shield field in me. <laughs> not gonna lie. I wouldn't find anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the ability to jump as fast and as quick. Um, yeah. So, well, so the, the good thing is, is here. There's a whole lot of different ways to play with this. There's plenty of time for them to to, to do different things to these as time goes on. Um, so that's the good thing. I would like to see in whatever balance patch is coming, whatever they're going to do there, I would like to see them get, again, the, vari- the variety back, you know? And so maybe with Scepters, it's you take a few things away, you maybe add a few other things so that they have a slightly different role to where they're not this constant used for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, lower their DPS maybe a little bit. I don't know. I mean, that's probably not going to be very popular, but nothing you do to... to see, that's the thing about Scepters. Everybody wants to see things change with the scepters, 
but mm-hmm. also nobody wants to see things change with the scepters. <laughs> right. they're, they're comfortable. Don't, let, don't make me stop using them the way I'm using them, but also change them. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's like a uh, Solomon's problem. They, everybody's yeah, afraid to yeah. break the baby or split the baby in half, but yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't have to be like that. No, especially no, not if they add new frigates like no. they have the assets for. I think a lot that of people will be happy on an interceptor nerf, or at least to slow them down or something, be able to lock them in some way. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with just making the change and shaking things up just so that people have to go from one meta to another and then doing that again a year later or whatever, six months later. I mean, just to keep things fresh, make you have to switch around a little bit. That's irritating, but I mean, that's also <laughs> part of the game. So, uh, sorry, I'm just reading the, the chat. <laughs> but I know anyway. they're going nuts over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and the article goes more, so go on. Yep, this is the the last and probably biggest idea, in my opinion. Uh, It's the the way I propose um, NetEase should break the bubble meta. And you're talking about the shield field? currently the bubble meta for those... Are you talking about the shield field meta? Yep. Okay. Shield bubbles are way stronger than uh, any sort of armor bubble fit, and everybody knows it. Fix the large armor wrapper. Yeah. Well, I, I've got a, I've got a couple tools that I think need to be introduced into the game to do that, and also uh, improve covert ops uh, in general. So, E War modules are they exist? Um, the the sensor dampener and things like that, like they're in the game, but there's no real way to manipulate signal uh, or lock on synchronization. So, what I propose is the introduction of two modules that can manipulate uh, lock-ons. One being a long-range um, uh, desyncer, so a flare, basically. If anybody outside of this range is targeting this ship, it blinds your sensors and makes you lose lock. Yeah, make them unlock. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Now, I never thought now, of something like that. Yeah, no, it's, so, an, it's, an, it's, a, it's a mechanic in EVE Online where you can break someone's lock yeah hmm that's so and, similar and it's, to it's how interceptors just warp away and then come back <laughs> yeah, yeah, <exactly>. yeah. <laughs> or or stealth bombers using offsets which I, I absolutely love stealth bombers um and i feel like that would give armor the love it needs to combat long range uh hate um, and it wouldn't answer the bubble problem on its own because that's sort of the answer to the answer to the bubble problem. I, I kind of went out of order on my notes here. Um, but chaff is, is the idea that I think would solve the bubble problem. So for, for those un- unfamiliar with chaff and flares, their, their purpose in aviation is to distract missiles from targeting, uh, your individual aircraft. Uh-huh. Um, Flares are cool because they're super bright and they shoot off super far away from your vessel and great for heat-seeking missiles. Shaft is really good at defending against sensor-based or uh, other, other, other type of, of seeking devices because it gives a whole bunch of flashy, bright, uh, the devil's confetti, basically. Mm. Um, but in a closer-ranged uh, profile, it drops off immediately off of the aircraft. So my thinking is shaft and flares in a space or sci-fi setting um, could impact uh, lock-ons more effectively. So I described flares. Shafts is just the closer range option. You know how there's a difference between uh, scramblers and, excuse me, disruptors? Shaft yeah, would yeah. be, yeah, shaft would be the equivalent of a um, scram. So one sec. And it doesn't have to necessarily mean that it's putting a bunch of stuff on space to uh, cause more lag. It's just a, a statistical number that you would run. Because, um, I mean, anything that's going to put out tiny little dots so, all over the place is going to... So here's something that... This is this is just what I'm imagining while we're talking about this. Is I'm thinking of like a flash grenade going off on your screen. So your screen goes completely white. <laughs> Instead of getting a black screen, you're getting a white screen and that's all you see. And oh, shit. Here, here's, oh, shit. Here's the next, I guess you could call it problem, is their use in large battles where you have one of those <laughs> going off every few seconds and all you see is white screen forever. 
You know, I, I, I could see that could be a problem, but this is just yeah. how I'm envisioning it because I haven't played Evil on. I'm not sure how Shaft works or what that whole thing so, is about. So, so for Shaft, the way I see that being delivered is through covert ops aircraft or covert ops ships. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay, so you get them in close, you get them within the bubble, and they lock on to a key target. In most cases, your tank. And anything targeting that target breaks lock, breaks uh, breaks lock on. So if your bubble and everything targeting your bubble breaks lock on, um, your logi just lost logi. You have to reconnect. They have to they have to reestablish their lock on for the bubble. That gives yeah, right. a, a a prime opportunity to alpha that bubble out yeah, of the picture. Your guardian. That definitely will make these battles go a lot quicker. Or so that's <laughs> complaining about the that aspect of the game. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It it depends entirely on not locking onto the tank. So it requires fleet coordination. It requires fleet timing. Uh because as soon as the E war is out and the shield is vulnerable you want to you want to start targeting their logi, burst that bubble and take them out and then you've just got a tank sitting in the middle of, middle of nowhere it it plays to the strengths of each ship in my opinion and allows for a new degree of tactical depth do you run the bubble play do you run um uh shaft and and stealth covert ops to punish the bubble play do you run uh, a counter to that counter? Because everybody wants a rock, paper, scissors kind of scenario. You, you can actually do that with any odd number um, moving forward. Like you can actually have multilinear parity going uh, as far as complicated as you want. I mean, right now there's a pretty good counter to, to uh, bubble play. It's just you don't see it uh, every day. It's happening, but you don't see it every day. And that is if if you've got a a large fleet coming in on your citadel to take your citadel in a uh, in fleet action, and they're running a shield field bubble, uh, you just untalk a bunch of dreads and 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 take oh. it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> the counter play is have a bigger wallet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Well, not a bigger wallet, but just a bigger stick. Um, so, I mean, it, yes, it costs more money to build a capital, but it doesn't mean it's not achievable. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, in all these, all this, the, the scenario you're talking about with the trying to take out bubbles, different ways of taking out bubbles. A lot of these things kind of individually exist, really. Whether it's a scepter dive, getting under the bubble, drones. Um, and, and a lot of that, uh, yeah, Ching fleet tactics, yeah. Um, Battleship push. You can, yeah, you can do all exactly. You can do a lot of those things now. Um, but when you start getting into the the, I don't know, it, it, the drones cause lag, and there's just I don't know. I think the, I like the idea. I think there'd be some difficulties for Netties to implement something like that. I think that would just totally. I don't know. Good, good thoughts, though. I mean, I like, I like the way you're thinking about it. It's good. Yeah, of of the five, that is probably my most outlandish, the introduction of new modules. I was mainly looking yeah. for things to fill those treasure chests uh, for for ads to drop. Um, and and really, the state of E-War at the moment is kind of shameful. Uh, dampeners it is. It's bad. Yeah. Like, no function. You get, you get one shot with a dampener. But, yeah. Yeah, those are just five things I would like to see yeah. from April. Good stuff. Good I, stuff. I man. could see it now. The flash. Everything was fine until the flash happened. <laughs> you know, and then uh, here, here's an here's a really bad joke. But in order to be immune to flash, your character has to have sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> the only way to get around it. Otherwise, you will get the white screen. Okay. <laughs> so very good. Crimson and uh, and thank you for this and post it on Reddit and get get the Reddit community yeah, going and you know people can add on to this and you can even send this yeah. to the, the Hayden or whomever your developer of choice is and and see what they have to say about it and maybe they have something in the works for some of the ide- ideas that you have so very good 
Thanks for the feedback too. It, it's I I already have several notes that I'm going to add to the post and edits that I'm going to make uh, as soon as we're done talking. Yeah, and then so. we had people in the chat also cool, commenting on it as well. And so uh, you know, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to going through and and, and looking at the comments with a fine tooth comb. <laughs> There's a lot there. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all about the flash. Okay. Cool. <laughs> thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah thank thanks you. for the opportunity. Y'all are amazing. Bye, right, man. Thank. Take care. All right. So, hey, yeah, cool. Very uh, interesting article there. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait to see it up on the uh, on the Reddit. Yep. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for all of Bradrick's feedback. And I say all of it because it's probably going to be a paragraph longer than the paragraph that it is. Pride and prejudice. That, yeah. That's another bad joke. <laughs> that's how, that's how long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I'm just full of bad jokes. I never have any good ones. Anyway. That's okay. <laughs> um, so last week we had talked a little bit about Providence with PM blue and as to, we well, don't really hear much about Providence. Um, I yep. did have a number of people actually message me after that episode and tell me a little bit about mm-hmm. Providence, Providence, and as well as you, Taylor Rick, you are from Providence, <laughs> yeah. and I had originally. Even, I think I remember you telling me that, and but it didn't click like when we were talking about that, and even I think I even said it like, you know, I don't really think I know anybody from Providence. <laughs> <laughs> blurb that's false uh, taylor rick was from providence and he did he did correct me on that and uh um they'd recently just had a battle that was pretty yep. big i uh, there's a video put out i, I want to say tahini put that video out i i, I don't remember mm, the. i'm not sure who did maybe it was but... i don't remember to uh who it was that gave to give credit for that um but there was something like 13 capitals from no on it on SRN. Tell us a little bit about this, uh, Taylor. You may know more than I do. Yeah. So, I mean, the Ricks uh, C-137 were initially from the first time into Knoll, we moved into Providence. So that's that's where we're initially from when we moved into the Knoll life. In fact, uh, our first quote-unquote citadel is still there, uh, Citadel of Ricks. So, uh, I mean... One of these days, it's going to come down. I'm just, I'm just saying. Anyway, so, um, yeah, SRN uh, in the north of Providence um, was finding themselves into a little bit of a battle with no, and they called on the whole Providence coalition to come and help out. And at the height of that battle, there was a little, just shy of 400 ships uh, in system with that fight, and it was a little bit of a mixed bag uh, until no decided to hot drop 13 capitals into the system uh, 11 of them were dreads two of them were carriers and that was the end of that fight so <laughs> uh right a little lopsided at that point um but so so providence is is definitely a unique coalition in the game and it is a providence coalition unless they've changed the name uh, it's still called providence coalition we left back in may of last year so it's been a while um they I know you referred to them as like the Amish <laughs> and, and, Yet again, and that's joke. not a bad joke. Yeah, no, it's not a bad joke actually. And it's some of them, some of the guys that I know back there kind of text me and were like, what the fuck? Why didn't you say something? And it's like, well, I wasn't on the episode. Right. Oh, okay. They only heard clips uh, because they were apparently playing clips of this um, in the high council uh, uh, for everybody to sit around and listen to. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of cute. But <laughs> so, <clears throat> They really think of themselves, and they really do actually try to be the Switzerland of the game. They, the reason you don't hear a lot from them is because they try not to get involved in all of the, the, the diplomacy or the alliances back and forth. You know, They don't want to be part of any larger coalition. They don't want to take sides with anybody. They want to stay out of the drama. Um, and they just want to stick to themselves and have, you know, nips with as many people as they can and not be blue to anybody so that they don't get drawn into those larger conflicts. Now, that's what they want to do. That, right. And that's why uh, that's why you don't hear a lot out of them. And that's why they try not to say a whole lot either, because they just want to stay out of the politics of the of the circle around the outside of the map, if you will. So um, and in that standpoint, you know, that that's that's one way to play the game. That's OK. That's what they choose to do. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, no problem with that. Um, 
but when you you know so they're so I, I think of them as a, as a Switzerland really uh, of the game. They just want to stay uh, neutral to everybody. Yeah, that does mean that they that does not mean that they don't get involved in battles. They get involved in battles all the time, just like this last one with no. And sometimes these battles get really large, um, and it's because they are quote unquote neutral to everybody. Everybody can go there and roam. <laughs> right. So. Well, um, there was a yeah. rumor way back when about Providence being the end boss of New Eden. <laughs> you did hear that joke. and That's a running joke, yeah. And, and Gulag Gang had um, uh-huh. made an effort behind that to uh, make that happen. And so they, I think yeah. they're a little mad about that. But, uh, but to what you said, though, you know, from the people that were talking to me, they said they only do defensive CTAs. Actually, they have no... Yep offensive ctas correct yep they don't go structure bashing anywhere they do roams but but even those sometimes their their pvp pilots doing their roams sometimes get curtailed by that that upper council so that they don't find themselves in a situation Mm -hmm. where they're attracting unwanted attention so i mean that's that's the way they play the game that's what they do um that's so and they just um, they just so happen to have a recent battle that made headlines that made headlines. That's right. Now, when you made the comment about uh, the Amish of the game, I mean, that's funny, and 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 I would defend them from the standpoint of saying they're not really the Amish of the game; they're more the Switzerland. But at the same time, they have no T nine, T ten space. They only have like five or six, maybe T eight space in the entire in, in all of Providence. That's it. Everything else is T seven or lower. So there's a running joke inside of Providence about them being Provi poor. Mm. So. <laughs> Which is very true. So, so I mean, your joke is is is, is apt. <laughs> well, I, uh, by by the Amish, resources think, aren't the same. By Amish, I think like they're kind of like out of the loop, you know, from the rest of the world. Yeah, they def- and they try to be, and they try to be. Yeah, so it's by design. All right. Well, citizens. the ouch. ouch. <laughs> the result of that battle. Even though No had brought all of those capital ships, due mm-hmm. to the good fight, they actually decided to have the Citadel repair. I believe that's what yeah, that they did. Yeah, they didn't take the Citadel. They did not yep, take they, the Citadel. Was a Citadel. They, they said they had a good nope. fight and they decided to let it repair. That's just because. Just because it's a good fight. There's no bad blood yep. between the two. Yeah, they they defended yeah. as best as they could. You know, that's. I, I've said. I, yeah, I've said this before, and I guess I'll say it again, and then then shut up. Um, anytime you're having battles like this and big fights, people people on one side or the other tend to take it personal, right? And and I know a lot of people in Providence feel like they're the punching bag, and they, and they 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 take it personal when when someone's coming and attacking them or roaming them on a regular basis or whatever. Um, and that's not there's nothing personal. Um, it's, that's just the game. And and that's part of the mechanic of the game. And, you know, it's, it's just a different, it's, it, I don't know. It's a different mindset there uh, than it is outside. And I can say that because I had the mindset of, of, of running the game like that when I was there versus what I'm doing now. And it's totally different. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with either way of, of gameplay. It's just that it's different. Yeah. So uh, yeah, maybe I'm not explaining that very well. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you can't, that doesn't mean they're not going to get roamed on. Right? right. And they shouldn't take it personal that someone comes and roams on them. Uh, even if they do it, you know, six times a day, because guess what? That happens in Knoll everywhere. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just nothing personal. It's just part of the game. Hey, I spotted so. an SRN fleet in deck once they, they're out and about. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you know, and and with the with the end result of the fight, that's not the first time No has let something go just because of a good fight. They actually do that a lot. Well, maybe not a lot. They I do. can't say that a lot. I've Every known them. I've known them to do that before. Let's just say. So yeah, yeah. You know, it is what it is. Okay, cool. And then we also have Fountain on Fire. Still, why is Fountain? Always on fire. I don't think anybody uh, at this point um, <laughs> wants. No, didn't pod me. <laughs> LOL. Yeah, the space cows are what. It's a total disarray. Happy bees died. They fractured off. They've they've got um, you know a new. I forget what they call themselves now, but it's a total mess. And it's a it's a it's anytime you create a vacuum, I love you. which is 
but you're brave. <laughs> I gotta play that song. <laughs> um, you, you've created a vacuum and fountain, basically, and it's been that way for a while. And so it's going to constantly be a little bit on fire until something settles down. Either there's going to be a couple of factions that have the whole area, or there's going to be one. And until that settles, it's just going to be a it's just going to be a, a shit show. It's going you know so but, that's fine. That's okay. I mean, even. Maybe not necessarily while Pantheon was there. Maybe while Pantheon was there was probably the most peace that it did see. But hasn't right. been Fountain hasn't Fountain been contested basically since the beginning of the game? That's true, and I guess that stands point of if you just look at the map and look at where it's at and look at how well protected you can make it. Right? Look at the entry points, the exit points, um, the amount of resources that are inside of it. It's a lucrative little, little, I mean, it's, it's like its own little side pocket. It's a lucrative area if, if, if you can hold on to it. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. X Nilo. That's right. Happy Bee is now X Nilo or One thing, Nihilo or it, Nihilio. I don't know. Whatever. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we already know about my. Now, what is my what is that issues. logo? By the way, is it is it a is it a man sideways with a long dick? I don't understand Whoa. what this logo is. It's three legs. Yeah, if you rotate. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Hey, okay. <laughs> it's pronounced banana. <laughs> wow, he laughed so hard his mic cut out. He did it again. Sorry. Um, I, I leaned back. I couldn't help it. <laughs> the. <laughs> it's banana. It's banana. <laughs> it really does look like X banana. <laughs> they use the same color scheme. Uh, they did. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make fun of anybody, but I was going to make a good uh, comment about fountain, and you totally dropped that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to say though, fountain had some pretty cool, uh, pretty cool constellations in there, and you know they're all named off of. I don't know what you would call them, just the animals or whatever, right? They have wyvern and unicorn and all this stuff over there, right? Mythical creatures. Yeah, mythical yeah, creatures, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I swear I'm drunk tonight. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Manicor, <laughs> Pegasus. Th that's pretty cool. It's better than ATAC H12, like what I live in or whatever it's called. Or a CCP that you can't even like type in the game. Right? <laughs> CCP USA. Yeah, they have that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So Fountain's still contested. There's a lot of battles going on down there. And I think... Um, oh, I, I, I feel bad because I don't know that where this system was, but there was a Citadel that went down in the last week. I don't know if it was in Delve or if it was in Fountain. I want to say it was in Delve, though. Is the X Pantheon Corp. Mm. I have to, I'm not even going to say anything about it because I don't know. Anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Let me talk about the thing I don't know about live on the air, and then we're going to talk about that, and then now we're not because I can't remember what it is, and we're going to move on. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we actually had some other things going down, and there is, uh, and talk about this, Taylor. What was going on with PHPC? That was another alliance that we yeah. talked about last week that nobody really hears about but then all of a sudden they're in the news yeah so i mean we you know we had that conversation with pm blue a week ago or two weeks ago now uh, i guess it was a week ago about um you know things you don't hear about sometimes um and merc uh coalitions in general you always hear about no and you hear about what no's doing but there's other mercenary alliances corps and coalitions one of them that used to be big back in the day or at least look like it might rival no back in the day a year ago or maybe six months ago was sixth seal and sixth steel was started by phpc pale horse um and oddly enough in the last uh couple days um phpc is no longer part of sixth steel even though they were the executor of it to start with and now they're just on their own not part of an alliance or anything and a, a tune by david 6606 is now the uh, that guy is now the uh, CEO of Pale Horse. So, and and I wanted to mention that because it's just I don't know, it's interesting. Don't know what Mercs are doing. Sometimes you don't, you can't tell what's going on. But that's an interesting thing to see Six Steel apparently breaking apart. And of course, if any of my uh, old Pravi friends are listening, you know exactly who David Six Six O Six is. So hmm. anyway, 
Yeah, and uh, Roslyn commented, 6T is raiding his neighbor live right now. So, <laughs> there's a fight to be had somewhere in New Eden, and there it is. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the executor corp of PHPC decided to do their own thing. That's not uncommon. It happens. No, no. But it is interesting, right? I mean, especially when you look at it, a broader picture of what the rest of that alliance is going to be doing. Um, yeah. And who they're working for and contracts. All that stuff's fun. Yep. Interesting spotlight on that. And then, uh, man, we actually had some new Oxalis features come out this last week. Yeah, it was a surprise to me. I didn't, uh, again, like the last week or so, two weeks, I feel like I'm very well, out of the loop with things. Yeah, so and, that was a surprise to me. And we didn't even get a patch notes or anything before the update. He just updated the bot. Like, oh, here we go. Here's a new feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Oxus oh, bot. It was a surprise to PM Blue too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was a surprise to his own bot. Yes. So um, <clears throat> I wouldn't say this is a feature, but he did... Uh, he did do a Reddit post on the Oxalis migration March plus February overall kill statistics. Now, this is a very good Reddit post. And uh, here, let me get the link for the, for the audience. If they had not seen it, I'll post this link right here. And <clears throat> so for the month, month of March, if you uh, contact PM Blue, you can get their entire kill mail channel parsed without paying. So, you know, he talks about that, his mm -hmm. supporters. Um, so he had noticed that the kill, kill mail IDs increment by one. Yes. And this allows him to get a good estimation on the amount of kills that happen per month. So in February, Oxus recorded 13,721 out of 121,000 estimated kills that occurred. So about 11.3% went through Oxalus. Mm -hmm. So he ran some numbers and they show the numbers here. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, scrolling down a little bit, uh, what corpse did all of this damage? He actually was able to narrow it down. And now this is, this is of the 11% that he did record. Pew at 620 billion. Goop <laughs> at 451. Uh, YG. YJCK at 392, Dead at 382, Nilf at 366, ECLA 347, Recky 314, Barbecue 293, Honk 283, Pan 233. You, what do you notice with this? I mean, uh, granted, it's only 11% of the kills. I understand that. But I see a lot of SHH and a lot of no corpse on here. Yep. I mean, that's the majority of your kills right there. I mean, unfortunately, today, BBQ got, uh, they barbecued me for $750 million on my ship. So that, you know, kudos to you guys for catching me. But, um, but yeah, um, yeah, those are your major PvP corps. So, and also, Silent and No both have the bot and other people don't. So, right. like Genesis Federation. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, barbecue hit one of my members too. We made it on Damon Zell's uh, last video too. So, that, that, th uh. that, that 13 bill Cinnaball. Yep. Ooh. Anyway, and what individual users? He was actually able to break it down to that's users. Cool. So, that's cool. Badran was number one at 272 billion. Unbelievable. Oh, Damon posted the kill. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's amazing. That number, that's huge. And so Sky Sniper came second place at 221 bill. It, this, these numbers are astonishing. Massive. I, I, They're massive. I, man, I, I'm lucky to get two bill in kills a month. <laughs> well, <laughs> 272. <laughs> Uh, a lot that's of like one ship. No, that's like one battleship. No, I, I, I'm that guy, like in Call of Duty, where I get one kill but 13 assists. You know, hey, I, I'm doing something. <laughs> yeah, I'm around. True. This is yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, I do like how this breaks down to though, where he's got some of the most common ships that got the final blow, as in the ones dealing out the most damage. Yeah, Macarial, Condor Two Interceptor. Arbitrator 2 Covert Ops, Dominix, RB Interdictor, Condor Interceptor. So Interceptor's on there twice. 
Yep. And then the most commonly killed ships, Dominic's 380. That's amazing. Most of these are mining ships, though. Retriever, 379. Coveter, 2, 347. Procure, 232. Adventure, 3s, <laughs> 213. <laughs> In all honesty, I'm oh, actually man. surprised I'm not seeing more Tempests on there. Yeah, it the, says 231. That's, that's not high, but yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, yeah. I would see more Tempests and more Prophecies because during this time, I think we're... the uh, Was Genesis War at the coming to a close at that point? Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't really at the mm-hmm. height of it, but you would have thought that those... winding down. Yeah, those numbers would have been higher. But that's just interesting. Yeah. So, Jen doesn't use Oxalis, that's true. So maybe that's half of half of the numbers there, but uh, so or he, less than half the numbers. He did have a question as to who the hell is flying Venture 3s. Yes, we do actually have new <laughs> players still joining the game. They are getting hunted constantly. Well, not just not just that, but you sometimes you want to just fly a V3. If you spawn uh, you know, a blue gravity well for a compressed ore. Um, and you just get a fleet of uh, V3s that can fly through there super quick. You're just getting compressed yeah. ore, and there you go. I, I mean, was telling somebody the other day, remember when the V3 had the quickest lock time in the game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing, that it was a tackle venture. That thing would tackle anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wonder, what's, the, what's the V4's uh, lock speed? Uh, I don't know. I just know they have 30,000 M3. Arc, uh, c- yeah, now I kind of want to go back and look at it again. Yeah. So... I have a V4 simply for sniping those pesky rocks. Yep. So okay, yeah, very those square cool. rocks. And I'm looking forward to seeing some more of these. Uh, this is a freaking yeah. badass Reddit post. So um, give that one an up, like I did. So an updoot, yep. I think they call them updoots <laughs> on Reddit. Up updoot, not upvote. Correct. Just up-dute, it's updoot. Really? Yep. Is that the slang the kids are talking it's, nowadays? Uh, it's a Reddit thing. Uh, Anyway, <laughs> so it's it's not the apes over the, on Wall Street bets. Okay, then so I don't understand it. PM Blue also hot dropped this uh, global bounty system on us as well. So he talks about this, and uh, here let me get you the guys that link too. And yeah, uh, I got that one pulled up already. So yeah, he talks about the bounty system. You know, you could filter a corp list, filter a location list based off of regions, constellations, and or certain systems. Choose whether or not to pay out. Choose max payout. Choose PPK percentage. So uh, it's got its own command that you're able to use there. It's got global bounties. Man, I mean, what other bot does this? Like, seriously. If there is one, I don't know of it. I mean, the the, the Oxalis bot does so much. Um Sometimes it, it kind of worries me that uh, it's going to crash and then no one's going to be able to do anything. <laughs> so, well, it's going to take it's, over it's, New It's Eden. overseeing so much stuff, yeah. It's got more money yeah. than Jita. It's running everybody's <laughs> payouts. It's yeah. watching all my shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we use a ton of it, yeah. It's all over the servers uh, on our end. But yeah, that's good stuff. I mean, I saw uh, for the first time today a couple of the guys post their kills and then get their bounty payouts instantly uh, yeah. with the way our system works. So it was pretty. It was pretty cool. And one thing I like specifically too about the bot is when you post a kill mail and then it's linked to your kill mail alliance channel. So if I post mm-hmm. a kill mail, or I don't think it happens with lost mails, but I think I know it happens with kill mails. You post the kill mail. And uh, on my server, and it will automatically post it on the Alliance, and it'll say it's from this Discord, and Discord yeah, specific. Yeah. So that's freaking awesome. Saves you the time of having to amazing. post it multiple times, you know? Post it once, be done. Oh, and there's also the feature to where you can actually send... It, it asks a question if you want a kill mail sent to Damon Zell. <laughs> so there's a threshold on that. Ah, that's cool. So I think seven bill <laughs> um, is the threshold on that. So if you get a kill with that, the bot will actually ask you if you want to send it. And I don't remember if you have to, you probably have to react like with a emoji or something. But um, probably, yeah, probably. <laughs> Either way, very cool. I'm excited for 
man, just watching the evolution of this bot too. Cause like I was telling you before the show, mm -hmm. I joined it when it had like 90 servers. Now it's up over 230. Yeah. It's, it's climbed quite a bit. It's climbed quite a bit. So. I'm and if excited. you're really, honestly, if you're not using it just for the kill mail side of things, then you're missing out on, on a huge advantage, uh, in time and, and just statistics and stats. And, and that, that all goes back to help your own players. So, I mean, just for the, just for that alone, it's worth it, but it does all these other things. It's a great bot. Yeah. It's awesome. And with, you know, with all this info too, um, I'm, I'm curious to see how the bounty system is going to work and how that gets implemented either through specific corporations or alliances, and then maybe even cross-reference that to, um, you know, the kills of the month or whatever. You know what I mean? You know, for the monthly kills numbers. Yeah, right, right. Yep, yep, yep. So, cool. All right. I think that's... In the <laughs> Heck, we have one hell of a show today. We did, and to, just to think, uh, an hour before the show, we, we didn't have a clue what we are going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, we will call it a show there, and thank you everybody for joining us live and making the show awesome. Really appreciate everybody that stayed with us and enjoying the comms and was chatting in the chat. Very much appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, so it makes it lively. It's great. So, uh, you know, and I'll do a shout out to all of our fellow content creators. You know, Damon Zell supports my show. Uh, New Eden FM supports the show. She supports the show. Sky News supports the show. And as well as I support them. So sh ch go check out all their content. And uh, they all do great stuff out there. As well as the other content creators. Captain Benzi, Gika, Gengar. There's so many to name, but uh, <laughs> check them out on yeah, YouTube. Great community. Yeah, awesome community. And uh, heck, we didn't even talk about the Evil Darkness thing. Oh, shit. You're right. We didn't. We had so much stuff to talk about. Maybe next week. Yeah, we'll yeah. see what happens with that. But anyway, <laughs> thank you all for another great show, and uh, we shall see you next week. All right. Good show. <laughs> it sounds like he's done. I guess he's not done. No, nope, that's one of those little pause that had a pause. A pause in there. <laughs> that's all right. New show. All right, round two. Ah, we're starting all over again. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Get it started in here. Let's get it started in here. <laughs>